I'm a liver doc. Most of the research I focus on is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is ubiquitous in this country with prevalence rates of somewhere between 30 and 40 percent. And about a third of those people develop fatty hepatitis that can progress to cirrhosis. And there are no FDA approved treatments for the disease. We don't fully understand who gets the progressive form of the disease. So there's a lot of research still needed in epidemiology, natural history, non-invasive diagnosis of the disease, because right now it requires a liver biopsy. And if you assume that 30% of the adult population has fatty liver, we're talking 75 million adult Americans needing liver biopsies. So that's not uh, possible. We really need to focus on non-invasive diagnostic tests, whether it's a blood test, an imaging study, uh, MRI and ultrasound, or, or a combination of those things. And then we don't have any FDA approved treatments. So uh, we consider ourselves a NASH Center of Excellence here. We typically get all the clinical trials. We originate a lot of the clinical trial work out of this institution. Um, and so that's what we focus on. It, it actually may be a little more prevalent. We published a paper in gastroenterology in 2011 showing that the prevalence of fatty liver was 46% in our population of adult Americans with a mean age of about 52, and the prevalence of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, the more advanced progressive form of the disease, was 12% in our general population. Um, so that's certainly, by published standards, higher than what we typically see. Is that a function of this is the only prospective biopsy proven prevalence study that's ever been done? Or is it just that we have a different population? I'm not sure. Well, the main three areas that we're focused on are, are prevalence and severity of disease. So we just launched about eight weeks ago an 850 patient um, prospective prevalence study where we're taking people that come in for routine colon cancer screening Again, their mean age is a little bit over 50. <clears throat> and we're asking them if they would like to know their liver health. So these are people that don't have any known history of liver disease, um, <clears throat> don't drink alcohol to the extent that we think alcohol is playing a role, and they're not taking medications that cause fatty liver. And those patients undergo a fiber scan, which is an elastography machine that measures stiffness in the liver, an MRI, an MRE, and, um, and then a liver biopsy if any of those show fat or fibrosis. So we're about 125 patients into our 850 patient study and so we're aggressively looking at the prevalence again <clears throat> and also correlating these non-invasive tests to liver biopsy to see if one of those tests can supplant biopsy and if it can't then which of those tests is actually the best study to get to either rule out advanced disease or rule in the need for a liver biopsy. So we're working on that, we're working on non-invasive biomarkers, particularly with a biomarker called YKL40, which is a kind of an, uh, a marker of fibrosis. Um, <clears throat> and we're about to publish that data uh, we did in collaboration with the University of California, San Diego. And then we do multiple clinical trials with fatty liver disease. So everything from anti-fibrotics, anti-inflammatories, uh, anti-steatotic medications. Uh, at the current time we have about 20 clinical trials up and rolling and enrolling right now. So it's disease awareness and, and that's what we lack significantly in this country is you know if you walk out on the street and you say hey what's NASH? You're probably going to get some blank stares and they might say is that like Nashville? Is that an abbreviation for the city in Tennessee? They're not going to say, well, that's, that's a form of fatty liver disease that's related to prediabetes, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, overweight, sedentary lifestyle. So <clears throat> we have to do a better job of, of preaching the gospel, if you will, of, of, of this disease, how common it is, the fact that it is asymptomatic. You don't have symptoms until typically you're cirrhotic and then you get fatigued. You may turn yellow. You may swell up like a Michelin man. Um, Intermittently, people will get right upper quadrant pain. About 10 to 15 percent of our patient population will have intermittent right upper quadrant pain that we think is due to swelling of the saran wrap that wraps the liver called glycine's capsule. And as the fat um, invades the liver, 
gets stored in the liver, the liver swells a little bit. <clears throat> in fact, you can see it sometimes very elegantly, you know, elegantly on CT scan. You can see the protrusions of the liver in between the ribs, actually. So that can cause uh, some pain intermittently.